question. Hello, this is Oksana Alabama, your favorite realtor on mobile, and today we have a special guest, Nathan, the, lo the loan officer, or another term we have, lender. Hi. Yes, I, I invited, I want to talk to him about VA loans, but before we get to VA loans, I'll move camera closer and uh, ask him, okay, number one, shortly, tell about yourself, where you're from, how did it start, how did you become a loan officer? Yeah, all right, so I grew up next door in Pensacola, Florida, and I uh, joined the military and I served the military for 15 years and I retired out of that and um, uh, I'm a beekeeper on the side. I keep honey or bees and I have a small uh, cottage industry bee company and then I am a, my primary is that I'm a, a mortgage loan officer and I truly love helping uh, people get into homes and especially veterans, uh, being a veteran myself. Um, I made it my mission to know the ins and out of the VA loan process to be able to take care of you. So, question number one. Uh, what does it mean that VA buyers don't have to pay anything? Right. So, with a VA loan, there's an opportunity for the seller to pay 4% over closing costs. That means that we can structure the loan to where you're not coming out of pocket anything for closing costs to purchase the home. Now, there is the VA funding fee. Um, there's a couple of stipulations on how that's applied, but let's say it's your first time use. If you have a disability rating of 10% or greater, uh, that will be waived, so you don't have to pay that. So if that gets removed, the only thing you're left with is your property taxes, your title fees, mm -hmm. and uh, your insurance and, and to set up your escrow. Uh, since we can do a 4% um, overage um, on the loan, uh, there's an opportunity to either A, roll that into the loan or have the seller through a seller's concession, cover the cost of that loan. You can get into a VA home or a, a VA loan into your home with practically probably nothing out of pocket or very little out of pocket. I mean little. So let's say four hundred thousand dollar home, uh, which there's no limit on the the amount of home you can uh, purchase. But let's just say, for example, on a four hundred thousand dollar home, you'd have the ability to purchase that home with. I don't know, maybe $2,000 out of pocket. Uh, you gotta figure there is an appraisal that's gonna cost you 650, and there is a pest inspection fee in this area of the United States for termites. So that's $150. So those are two upfront fees that you would have to cover. And don't forget the earnest money at least $1,000, right? How do we handle that? Earnest money with $1,000, just a simple check to uh, that's held in escrow at title. Um, that would, could be applied to the loan at closing, um, and and that takes care of that. You don't have you don't have that commitment. You don't have to do a down payment. There's no uh, primary or private mortgage insurance on a VA loan, mm -hmm. so okay. you don't have that expense. Whereas you would definitely have that on an FHA loan or on a uh, conventional loan if you did less than twenty percent down. So okay, so uh, let's say let's talk about credit score. All right. Um, yes. Yeah. If, if your bank, how low the credit score could be for a person to get into a house? All right. So on a VA loan, um, I can go as low as five hundred on a on a VA FICO score. Um, so if you think you're in the five hundreds, I got a, I got a VA loan product for you and in a path forward to home ownership. You could literally be in a home in about thirty days. Mm -hmm. So it takes 30 days to process the loan. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about money so people are <clears throat> clear. If we find the house, if, if we find the house you like, you pay earnest money as a deposit, thousand dollars. Then you pay inspection, pest control, and appraisal. 
An inspection usually 350, mm -hmm. then 150 pest, pest uh, termite uh, inspection, and 650, 650 um, appraisal. So pretty much $2,000 you need to have in a bank account to start looking at houses yeah. as a VA uh, buyer. Yeah. Um, so if somebody applies to get a loan through your mortgage, what's the name of the bank by the way? Success Mortgage Partners. Success Mortgage Partners. How long it takes you to give people an answer? I could do uh, a, about 24 hour turnaround time mm -hmm. to get you a fully qualified uh, pre-approval letter. Uh, that's as good as cash, so when you're making mm -hmm. offers, uh, you present that document, it's signed by me and my, my it's, it's got my, my bank's letterhead on it mm -hmm. and that is as good as cash. Mm -hmm. How people reach out to you? Can they find you on Facebook? You see, we found you got a Facebook page here. Yeah, uh, Facebook. It's Nathan Carver, the mortgage guy, mm -hmm. um, or at natecarver.com. And uh, that's my personal website page, and all of my contact information is there as well. Now we opened up a website uh, where you can uh, talk to your mortgage guy. And uh, really cool, cool thing, I think, it's that you bring the honey from your bee farm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's it. That's the um, honey from my, my bee farm. And I bottle this up uh, once a year. And for my real estate agent partners and uh, for all of our clients, when we celebrate closing your home that you get as part of part of the uh, the welcome home care package just to just to say thank you and uh, that let you know that i'm going to be here for you uh for a lifetime uh of home ownership to help guide you through uh the real estate world uh in the ever-changing market so do you have a, i want to hear crazy be a story like okay so the very first introduction to bees i was i think i was probably 14 15 years old and uh my dad and my grandpa and i we got us a beehive and then we i don't know we thought we could invent or create our own bee suit and so we took some mesh and created uh with burlap sacks and we just created this bee suits for us totally didn't work uh, the uh, we popped the lid off the beehive all of the bees came up and it's just like in a cartoon where they mass into this black cloud and they chased us my grandpa and I ran to the truck got in the truck shut the doors and we're just saw our dad my dad running across this field towards a lake um, and these this black swarm following him and my grandpa and I were just laughing so hard we were getting stunned still but we were laughing at my dad my grandpa wet his pants and <laughs> it was just it was hysterical my dad dove into this pond um, to get away from the bees one I've never seen my dad ever run and uh, so he was running he dove into the pond and the bees just hovered over the pond in this black mass until he came up for air and then they would come down at him and he would go back under the water um so, so that was my first attempt at beekeeping and it's a, a memorable moment with my dad and my grandpa and uh we still tell that story do you still get stung every year every year i i like to think that i've built up an immunity to it but um i think about the 15th bee sting i'm tapping out for the day and uh I have to go take some Tylenol and go lay down because it wipes me out. But uh, yeah, sometimes I will say that sometimes they sting me and it kind of doesn't hurt at all, mm -hmm. like maybe up in the arms or something. But for whatever reason, if they sting me in the palms of my hands, I mm -hmm. guess that's where all the nerves are. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly painful. For a good 12 hours, my hands are just swelled up. So. Okay. That's uh, not not something I look forward to. And I still suit up. I suit up now in a real bee suit. And uh, anytime I'm messing with my bees, I will suit up. And I still get stung. But not 
Not not nearly as much as my dad did. So. So having a bee bee farm doesn't mean you have an orchard with some fruit trees. Yeah. So um, out where my I keep my bees, I've got a pond, uh, a lot of wildflowers, uh, things native to this area. Mm -hmm. uh, there are fruit trees, grape vines, uh, peaches, figs, pears, and just the, a variety of wild things. Mm -hmm. Whatever's natural the natural pollinators or pollen producing plants, um, mm -hmm. flowers in that area. So they get a wide variety of, of uh, things to choose from. And every year, uh, it's different mm -hmm. year to year. You mean like the taste of honey? Yeah, the, the taste of the honey, the, the, the color, uh, light or dark. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just, it's gonna change from season to season. Mm -hmm. It could be weather related, rain lack of rain droughts all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. play into that and then whatever sources of nectar and pollen are, and yeah nectar and pollen are available um that play into that and you never know you never know what you're gonna get maybe then one year somebody maybe a neighbor will plant uh, i don't know uh, mint for example i did mint one year in my garden and that year my honey had a a note of uh, mint in it, and you could taste it, and the, but that was interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I've got. Yeah. You know, uh, see, I'm I grew up in Uzbekistan, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, but and I loved honey when I was growing up. I, I I lost my taste to it, but still my favorite honey. If I do want to have some honey, it's buckwheat. Oh and yeah, it's dark color, and you can still buy it in like Russian food store or like health food store. Yeah. Buckwheat, and it's very dark, and it has specific flavor, and it's it tastes like medicine. And when you take it, you feel like, you know, maybe you should grow some buckwheat, you know, to like have yeah. a different flavor. So I I didn't do it with buckwheat, but one year um, I did a, an exercise just to kind of play with the flavors. So I planted. A wide variety of sunflowers mm -hmm. and um, zinnias, scabiosia, mm -hmm. and um, what else did I plant? Oh, a lot of garden vegetable stuff: mm -hmm. squash, okra, tomatoes. Okay, um, that kind of thing, just to see. Mm -hmm. And that is the year that I planted the mint, also, um, and a bunch of sage and that kind of stuff, just to kind of see what. If I could influence the honey, I think we, I think I did. It was a really good year, um, but they go, they go so far, mm -hmm. like five mile radius mm -hmm. from the beehive. So they're gonna pick whatever mm -hmm. they're gonna go to wherever the greatest source of pollen is that they mm -hmm. find. And uh, I, I was like, well, what do you got to do to have? Uh, Clover honey or buckwheat honey, and it has got to be. I think you would have to set it out in the middle of a massive farm for that. You need to one really big farm. Yeah, okay. like you can do. Well, then you know, like orange honey, orange blossom honey. Mm -hmm. Those hives are sitting in the middle of a citrus field, mm -hmm. where there's just orange trees, orange trees orange to the trees. end of the horizon. I think. <laughs> so I, I don't have. <laughs> It's fun to experiment, but I can't make the bees go to the one thing that I want okay. to see. Okay, all right. So, okay. So. Well, thank you so much, and uh, I appreciate your input. Yeah. And um, uh, we're going to put in the main comment uh, Nate, Nathan's information, and uh, uh, he's going to be his phone number. Don't hesitate to reach out about your video loan. We've got to talk to the mortgage guy. I appreciate that. I'll take care of you. Thank you. Uh.